today I'm going to be experimenting and playing with um, watercolors and stencils and show you how I use the stencils with watercolors but first I'm going to be drawing a face and off to the side I have some super dirty water and a Jane Davenport there's two palettes of um, I don't remember what they're called but I got two palettes of them mixed onto one I'm going to draw a try to draw a quick quick face and there's an artist I've been looking at on Pinterest that has these super long triangular faces I've been digging so I'm gonna try to capture that and the eyes are kind of high and a long nose so That's kind of a rough sketch. Now I'll just darken in some of these lines I'm, I think I want to keep. I still kind of go back and forth with them and change them. I'm not sure about this egg shape elongated. I, I tend to like my jaws a little more like squared out right here. Here. Still need to add parts of me in it. Things that I like. Let me put a shoulder off over here. I'm going to take some of these lines out and it may erase some of the lines that I need, but that's okay. I think I'm going to chop off part of her chin. I don't like it quite that long. There. I like the way that looks better. And that longer pointier chin. On this chickie anyway. Here. Now, should I add some ears? Because I tend to leave them out. Put them a little lower than my normal. And I'm not going to draw it as long as the eyes to the nose. Just kind of redefining some of these lines now. see I'm just testing here to see if I want her eyebrows or the eyelid up higher or lower because I tend to do them like this I'm gonna try it out like that because I just don't um, it's not my normal and I'm just gonna play with it and see what it looks like and see if I like them arched up a little more. The next thing will be deciding how big I want her eyeballs to be. <coughs> and if I want them kind of looking over There. 
I did a girl yesterday and her hair was kind of like that and I really liked it with the headband. So I'm going to try her and it'll be a little more my face with this jawline. Give it a go. Now we can start the fun part which is painting. What I really need to do, we'll put this color thingy over here because I need some clean places to play. So I'm going to start out with, this is buff and put that for her skin tone, the first layer anyway. And I'm going to water this down quite a bit because I don't want it um, too dark. I'm going to go ahead and put that across her eyelid. I think sometimes I'll leave it, but I don't want it to be the white of the paper. I'm shocked I'm not forgetting the ears. <laughs> I tend to leave them out. The only part I'm leaving white is the eye. And I'll let all of this dry and put some shading, shading in. I don't think I will go in with some of this spice color. And I'm just going to put it in the same well on my paint palette where the buff was. So if a little bit of a little bit of the buff mixes in, I'm okay with that. It actually will make it all um, kind of work together better. I'm drying off my brush a little bit now and just pushing into this to kind of blend it. And I may, depending on how far over this is when I do the other side, take a lift a little bit of that out. I don't know yet. And I do turn my work to better suit my natural motion. Go ahead and add some to her nose before I forget. And I'm just going to really do like a triangular shape here, somewhat. And I'll go in on the other side. Now you can use a photo reference for shading, which is probably much better, but this is my go-to. I kind of, if I'm doing it without a photo reference, I do it kind of the same almost the same every time. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know this is my favorite brush, the Silver Black Velvet. I love it. Love it, love it. Now I need to just a smidge it under here. And then a little under her lip too. Kidoki. Now, I think I'm going to take some cocoa. already got it over here. You can't see this palette, but... And do just a little bit of cocoa, too. Just not as... Like I said, not as... It won't be covering as much area as the last color. What was that? Spice? Just keep adding a little bit of depth to it. I'll put a little bit over here, too.
Ooh, I like where that's going. Looks good to me. You know, I used to think when people were getting their paint pellets ready and they'd um, rinse their brush off after they got all that color on it that they were just totally wasting all that paint. <laughs> but I know that now it's totally needed to get control of how much paint you got on your brush. But I really thought, oh my gosh, just use that paint on your paper. Why rinse it off? Anyhow, I left that ear out. I'm not surprised. <laughs> Sometimes I just don't even paint ears on because I know I will totally leave them out. Just a smidge of this in here too. Cool beans. I'm really loving this color on here. Now what I think I need to do on my in my own personal playtime is find some colors with the Daniel Smith and try to mimic these colors in their colors. Oh, I really like her. She's coming out cutesy. Cute, cute. Now, I want to see what color to use for her cheek. So I think I'm going to try this best friend, which is a bright pink. I'm not going to use it by itself though, because it's quite, in my opinion, it's cool. Now I could have my cools completely wrong. And I'm going to mix a little bit of this um, cocoa in with it because this has cocoa. If I mix it, it should go well together. And I do like that mixed. That color is pretty. And it's pretty wet, so I'm going to have to make sure my brush isn't too wet still to pull it out. I do like that together. I hadn't tried that before. Ooh, that's pretty, pretty color. Mm-hmm. So that was Best Friend and Coco mixed to make that. I do like that. And right now I'm just eyeballing this side to see if I get my colors kind of even. Because I feel like my cheek colors sometimes go... have my cheek higher or lower on one side than the other. <laughs> but it's okay. It's all whimsy. Not perfect. Oh, I do like that color, y'all. I hadn't tried it. I've been trying to stay away from the um, that pink because it's like opera pink and it's it fades really bad. But this is going to be in my journal. It won't be like hanging on a wall or exposed to sunlight, so it should be okay. I still try to stay away from it though, as pretty as I think it is. Oh, I love that color. Okay. So now that I've got that color there, I'm going to do as I always do. And just put a little bit of that color here and there around her face. And I tend to do it across this temple up here on one side. And then a little bit in the shadow here under the chin. That's just my... I, I may have seen that somewhere over the time of learning, but I know if, I feel like if you put a little bit of that color all over, it really pulls the pulls everything together. And I do love some on the nose. I love some pink on the nose, and I'm going to still kind of do a little bit of a triangular shape here. I think it looks pretty cool now what I'll end up doing is that same color I used on her cheeks I'm gonna use on her lips but it's gonna be much more concentrated color so while all of this is kind of drying I think I'm gonna put a little bit of that pink in here too while all of that is drying I'm gonna 
trying to figure out what color I want her hair. I'm thinking I might just go cocoa, like a light. Well, it can't be too light because I don't want it to just blend with this. Or should I go for a black or gray? And then do a pink headband. I wonder if I use that pink now here with no brown in it, if it's going to be too bright. Let me try something else. I'm going to try mixing that um, Best Friend with a piece of that, they call, she calls it vitamin C, that orange. Let me put a little more of that Best Friend. And then maybe a hint of that um, cocoa. Mix those three together and see what it looks like. It's still super, super pretty. I think I'm going to go with that for the headband. My brush has a drip on it. But that's the vitamin C. That best friend. And a little bit of cocoa to it. So in my mind, I'm thinking if that cocoa's in there, it should be good, good to go. And this is why I love this brush, because I can really get in these fine spots. See now in this corner here where it needs to be darker when I layer up on it, add some layers, some colors to it, I can add that um, cocoa in there. Which it should look really good. Any of those three colors I can mix back into this. Even that orange, I think I'm going to add for highlights where the sun might be kissing this part. Let me see. I really like that color mix. You know, as much as I love the Daniel Smith, these colors she's got on her palettes are really made. I mean, they're already selected for you. <laughs> they work so good. Oh, I do like that, y'all. That little bit of orange in there gave it a little more oomph. It's a little different from this, so that's good in my eyes. So now the hair color is going to be my only thing. What do I want to do? I wonder if a blonde... I'm trying to look at this as a whole now to see. Hmm. I do think the cocoa is going to be the best color. I've been liking that for hair color lately. Let me see if that's still wet wet. Let me dry that a little bit because I don't want to be too close to this and that brown pull into that hair band. So I need to dry it. So just a second. Okay. Now I'm going to flip her and do the hair. I think I'm just going to do the cocoa. And I may mix it with some other colors too. You see how much water this brush holds too. I'm just going and going and going. And I kind of like when you dab it like that, it's giving a little texture to that hair. I'm going to start over here and move in the middle. Hopefully I can blend it okay over here and there's not a line going on. brush as well as I did the last time.
I do like the way that dabbing is putting that. It almost makes her look like she's got curly hair. So what I'm going to do now is go in. I'm going to put some of that um, vitamin C, that bright orange, and then mix some of that brown cocoa and do these shaded areas and see if you can see that orange in it. I might not have put quite enough. So now what I'm going to do, that's kind of heavy, but that's what I want is for it to be a deeper shaded area right here. And I'm going to just tap and push into that now and gradually kind of lift up. That orange, you can see just a hint of it in there. I really like that. And because I used it in here, when you use these colors and mix them together, it really makes the whole piece come together. And this color is lightened up quite a bit, so I know I'm going to want to brighten that hair band up as well. So I'm going to let this hair dry first. And I'll probably go play with their eye color now. So if I've got these orangey pinks in here, I'll grab my color wheel and see that the oranges across from them is like a blue or blue-green. So that's what I'll do her eyes with. I did her eyes in a blue-green mix and now I'm going to mix into that. But I really like that pink, orange, and brown mix. That creates that super pretty color. And I'm just going to put it up to that point and then tap into it to blend it. Because I may keep this lighter, but I may because... Hmm, I was going to say I may add that orange in here for a highlight, but I'm not sure about that. It might be too much. I'll try it and see. Maybe a diluted color of it. Just around the edges here, I'm going to put a little bit of that color too, the darker, another layer. Now let me try something and see. I'm just going to put down a bit of that orange and get it super wet, tap it off. Maybe see if I can put a little bit of a highlight here with that. Oh yeah. That looks good, y'all. That looks really good. More orange instead of the brown across there. I really like that. Mm-hmm. Now I need to come in with some of the pink by itself, I think. Oh, yeah. I'm digging that, y'all. I'm just blending some of it in here and there. Oh, that pink looks super good. Right here. I'm going to add more over here. Mm-hmm. That is sexy. I love pink with orange. Oh, I love it, love it, love it. With that brown hair, it looks nice. Now i got to figure out what color I want to do her pupils. I guess it may be that ink or... I may go with the raven. That's black, but I don't know. I don't know. Raven might be too much. Maybe I should use cocoa mixed with some ink. 
I don't know. Let me see what that would look like. There's some cocoa and ink. That may be nice. The cocoa mixed with a little bit of ink is what I'm going to go with, y'all, for her pupil. Because it's almost like gray. Oh, that's nice. So that's not going to be so in your face like that um, raven would be by itself. I'm just going to do a little circle here so I'll leave that white space. And I'll darken this color up some. I just wanted to play with it to see first. But I do like that. That looks nice. I'm going to have to remember that. Oh, I do like that, y'all. Mm-hmm. Play, play, play. Oh, yeah. Now I'm going to just take that color and put it around some of these darker spots where it needs to be darker. A little over here. And because it has that brown in it, I will repeat this till the cows come home. Mm-hmm. I think it needs to be a little darker right here, too. Mm-hmm. I'm digging it. So let me get some of that color I used up here I'm going to put on our lips now. And I'll decide when I get it on there if it needs more pink or orange. See, that's a bit orange, but that's okay. It may look good. So right now I'm just laying down a what do they call it? A wash. And then I'll deepen this color. And once that dries, I'll go in with this pink. I am so digging this, y'all. I'm loving it. <laughs> ah. So, I'm going to let this dry. And now I'm going to go in that eye. I'm pulling more of that, I want to say phthalo blue, but she calls it butterfly. Just a little, a little bit. And where it would be darker right under this eyelid, I'm going to dab it. And so it doesn't dry too fast, I'm going to go ahead and work this one and push into it. I'll do the same to the other. i got a fan going here behind me so it may dry this a little bit quicker when there's not when I don't use too much paint. And now I'm going to grab a little bit of that Jiminy, that bright green, and just put it a little bit on this side. Maybe just on that side. I might do the whole... I might add a little more blue to this, her right side, our left, and then kind of push and pull into both of those. There. I like that. So now I'm going to mix more of that, um, what is it? Ink and cocoa. And go back in here and deepen this up. So you can tell I got more brown in there this time than the last. And that's okay because you can always add some of that ink back in. I'm going to try to stay away from trying to be too perfect on that because I don't want to. I want this line to be kind of thin right here. Her eyelid could have used a little more of that skin color. It's a little too bright. And I want this super thin. This eyeball's bigger. Feels like when I'm painting it. The pupil. See, I try to not be so perfect and I just have to go back in. I'm just going to try to put a little bit of shading through here in the eyeball itself because I don't like it being that straight, harsh line. I may put just a little bit of that color mix from this, make it a little more brown, and put it over her eyes some because I think it's just too, too bright. So it has a little bit of pink to it too. 
but it still has that cocoa there much better much more better and I'm going to take that same color I used for her eyelids and just follow this little line to make a skinny mine are always skinny eyebrow maybe one day I'll practice on those more <laughs> You know, the areas you don't do so good in, you tend to stay away from there. Okay, now her lips need to be darkened up a bit. So, I'm going to reach in this pink. Because I like how it looked up here. And put that on her top lip. She's ready for the summer. These bright pillars. And then just a smidgen on the bottom lip. I always put a little there and then dry my brush off and then just kind of blend it. Cute, cute. I'm going to do this orange now with just a mm, smidget of pink. There, that looks okay. Maybe make it come down a little more. And I'll put some of that pink, brown, orange mix in on the side. It's too wet. And my towel now is super wet. Let's see if I can get some more of that color in here. To make it look a little darker. Maybe some shaded areas in here with that color. And leave it kind of bright in the middle. Mm-hmm. I like. So, I'm going to dry this now. And then play with the background. And show you stencil work. Her lips lightening up quite a bit. So, I'm going to go in with a little more on it too. But, I really feel like I might want to um, choose the same colors as Jane has on her palette in Daniel Smith colors because she's already done the work for us picking out all of those pretty colors and they play so pretty together and see as you build up these layers it just looks so good dry it and put some more if it's too light because it will lighten up quite a bit mm -hmm. all ready then so I'm going to mix ooh, I'm gonna make mud. <laughs> I had some of that pink left on there and put it in that green. Okay, so I'm gonna pull some more of that butterfly, which to me is like phthalo blue, and just a smidgen of the Gemini, because it makes a really pretty corally, not corally, what would you call it, like a teal. And then I'm just gonna go around her and I'm going to add some blue to this too because that's way too green. I may even pull some of that um, 70s eyeshadow to kind of lighten this, this up just a bit. And I don't mind muddy water. Not, you know, if it's not too, too muddy. Let's see how that 70s eyeshadow is going to make that a little more teal. And look kind of like her eyes. And here's where we start playing with stencils. Let's see, my water's dirty, but I, I like the effect that gives. And I'm just wetting this page over here because I want this color to bleed out and run and drip. And then put some of that 70s eyeshadow in here. You know, I may need to add some of that to her eyes because I like that color better than just that blue uh, I want to say blueberry butterfly it's a little softer to me and because I want this side to be the darker side the more shaded side I'm gonna add more of this blue all over and that was that lighter 70s eyeshadow 
kind of darken this up just a little bit wet and then I'm going to add some of that butterfly closer to her that's pretty dark in it it'll lighten some too though and now I'm going to wet my brush and really move this color now you can always add some of that um, other blue into there and that'll soften that up just a smidge or two there I like I like that now what I'm gonna do is add just a little bit of that orange super weak I'm gonna water it down pretty heavy and I just made mud again because that blue with that orange it's pretty beside each other but not mixed I mean unless you want that brown I must have a lot of that blue in my brush I did it again <laughs> Let me pick it up. See how it went muddy? Okay, I'm gonna dab a little up here. Since that's too bright, I'm just gonna wet and pull. Just so it looks a little um, like a light source maybe coming from over here. I could have added a yellow, but I didn't use or even that sand color. Sand color probably would have looked better. Let me do that. Yep. It's getting a little green. That's cool. Because that looks good. So because we got this sand in our face, it's going to look good. Okay. I'm going to dry this a bit and then show you the stencil part. There. Now the last time I played with this, I didn't have my paper so dry. And it took me a few because it was sopping wet over here. I'm going to take a makeup sponge and dip it in the end of it in water. This end and then kind of wring most of that out. And then I'm going to decide what um, stencil I want to use. I really love this pattern. I like this too though. But this girl kind of looks like that. I think this matches her better. I don't know why. So I'm going to lift this up a little so you can see. I'm going to lay this across here and see if I can lift some of this color. Like I said, last time I did this, um, the colors weren't so dry. I might have dried it a little too much. Let me try something. Maybe I don't completely ruin it. I'm just going to wet that just a smidgen. Mm. Let me get a paper towel. and pat into it and see if that'll pick it up a little more because I don't want to rub the paper too too much and start making it peel even though it's watercolor it's like I don't I don't have gesso or anything on here so oh looky looky that's gonna be awesome now let me get my sponge and wet this a little more By wetting this through here, letting it sit maybe a minute, a second or two. And then going over it with the paper towel. I should probably be using another sheet of paper to do this because then I'd get like a mono print maybe. Where this is lifting through here. Kind of pushing through there with my fingers. Oh, I love that. Holy moly. I'll have some pictures um, of that up close because that looks super good. I love that. 
I'm going to do the same over here and try to keep it off of her her body because I don't want to put these marks in there let's see if that's going to work quicker that way than sponging it I think the last time I used a um, baby wipe and rubbed but when you have dirty stencils like I do it's going to cause some of that dirtiness to peel and make marks too so <laughs> ask me how I know let me see how that's doing nothing at all okay so I'm going to get in here and rub some then and just try to be careful and see if I can get some of this color to lift Yeah, that's working better, but it is super wet, so now I'm going to dab because I don't want that bleeding into her. Yep, that worked better. Oh, I absolutely love that. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do is I've got these light circles, and I'm going to take some of that paint, get me a wet puddle. I'm going to mix that, um, and I keep forgetting these color names. Where's that? If it was thalo blue, I'd remember it. <laughs> Butterfly and a 70s eyeshadow. See, I don't know of a Daniel Smith that's similar to the 70s eyeshadow. It's more opaque. Maybe that's maybe I should just mix some with some white, but I don't usually use much white. I think I'm going to add just a smidge of green in that too cuz it's not teal enough. So I got a not big big puddle that's the color and because this sponge is wet it's gonna hold that color on the end it absorbed a bit but I'm gonna go back over these areas just a little and I'm not I'm gonna try to hold it to where it's not like this I don't want it directly over the other ones and then just kind of dab it here and there because I want some dark circles and then You'll see some light too. Just give it some. See how pretty. Cool, cool. Okay. Now I soaked up most of that color, but maybe I got enough left on here to play with. Just enough. I don't want it like in your face dark over here anyway. And I can also take some of that sand color if I wanted to and go up here and put some. But I think, well, maybe I should try a little bit of this color. Since it's almost gone off my sponge, it won't be too, too crazy maybe. And I'm staying careful to keep it off my image. Yeah, I like that. I'm just going to go ahead and make it look like it's the background over here. There's not a whole lot of paint left in here, so it's not too, too dark. Yep, I like her. I love it. Love it, love it. The only thing that I usually do now is I'll go in and do some pencil. Just kind of um, bring the lines back out a smidge. And maybe put a little bit of white um, gel pen. And I do like her pupil colors and stuff because it has a little bit of that ink in it. It's darker than, it's a different color than this, but it still, it works. To me it does. I keep saying that because I'm afraid somebody's going to see this and say, you don't know what the heck you're talking about. <laughs> so I'm going to add a little bit of this in her lip. Maybe a little on her nose. And then pat it because I like to smear it out where you can't see the lines quite as much. There. Cute, cute. Maybe just a smidge it over her eyelid. Give her a little bit of a highlight here. Not much. Oh, and y'all know what I like to do, too. 
I wonder if I can do that with this. Mm -hmm. I usually like a little bit of a highlight there. I'm just going to make a mark and then smudge it out with my finger. And her corners of her eye, does it needs just a smidget of pink to me. I'm just grabbing some of that mix I already had. I'm going to do that and then pat it out so it's not too... Just a hint of color there. Lift a little too much out. I'll lift it with my brush instead. I got more control. <laughs> and I think I might want just a little bit more pink on her nose. Just a little bit. That's not just a little bit, is it? But that it looks good. I do like that color there better. A slight bit darker here. And one thing I can do now is kind of look at this through my camera and get a better sense of how the color's balanced out or not. I like her, y'all. But I am going to do my pencil thing now, I think. I probably should just leave her alone, but I think her... I need some line work in there. So I'm just going to grab this HB one because I don't want it, like, too, too dark. Sharpen it up just a smidge. I do want this eye to have a little more. And too, with this graphite, it will have a shine. When you turn your paper, graphite has a shine to it. So if you don't like that, you probably don't want to do this, but I don't mind it. I'll just turn it and look at it at a different angle so I don't see it. Because I do love me some graphite. I'm just doing some light lines around here just to kind of define some of these areas a little bit, not too, too much. And I tend to use short, quick strokes because my slow lines are too wobbly. They're bad. I mean, I can do it if I have to. It just takes too long. Mm -hmm. Okay. See, just a little bit of line there I think looks good. And I didn't have any here for a shirt. I'll just add a little bit. going a little bit darker here at her lips just to make it look a little deeper there and this part I'm really loosey with because I like to gonna make her hair look curly there. Cool beans. Well, that's how I like to use stencils and watercolor. And if you didn't want it in the background, you can always do a solid back here. And if it's the image with um, the whole figure, you could use it just to give their clothes pattern or in their hair. However, but I'm going to date her and call this done. And I hope you enjoyed it because I did. And I love her colors. And I can't post this until later. <laughs> I want to post it today because she's cute. Anywho, there she is. I hope you enjoyed and thank you for watching. Subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Mm -hmm. I'm 
digging it. 